If you've done some calculus, you probably came across something like this. Or perhaps this. And you probably ask yourself whether, well, this is rigorous or not. Is this rigorous or not? Can we do this? Well, you probably stopped thinking about it, or you heard some mathematician say that this is not rigorous and you sh shouldn't use this notation like multiplying the dx's, then integrating both sides, because this is not rigorous. It only works, but it is not rigorous. But in this video, I want to convince you that this is actually not true, that doing this, spoiler alert, is very rigorous. It can be made rigorous. And today I'm talking about it because I spent a lot of time thinking about it and I realized that I finally figured out what was going on. So today I want to talk about it with you. So this is our dy by the x and uh, we can think of it in different ways. So is this just notation? Because we know that the derivative of a function is defined as the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So all in all, this is a ratio and then we take the limit. So this is convenient notation to write dy by dx because it's this equals to the limit as h goes to zero of delta y by delta x. So this is a limit of a ratio, so it's a good notation, and this is one way we can look at it, just notation, but this is not very satisfying, so I'm going to look at this in different ways. Sometimes you might see, for example, this equation, or something written, for example, x squared, and someone put a d by dx in front of x squared. And uh, this means, okay, take the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. So this is 2x. And, uh, well, this is different from this. Uh, because this is called an operator. So what an operator does in maths is to take a function and output another function. It's like a function but the domain of that function, not properly the domain, but it takes functions and outputs other functions. So an operator that is rigorously called a functional is basically something, an object, a mathematical thing that takes a function and outputs a function. So this d by dx can be thought of as a, an operator a function only takes x squared and outputs the derivative to another function to x. And this is also convenient because this is what I use all the time, uh, this Leibniz notation, so-called Leibniz notation. It's very useful because uh, you can think of it as an operator. So for example, I apply d by dx on both sides. I mean, I take the derivative on both sides of an equation. So this is the standard way uh, people look at it, and it's very convenient. But what about the ratio thing, the ratio stuff we were talking earlier? Well, this is the point of this video. So we saw two ways to look at it, just notation and an operator. Now we have to look at the ratio fraction thing. So is this a function? The answer is no, because a function a, sorry, a fraction as a numerator, I call it p, and a denominator q, and this p and q are both integers. So p and q are integers, so they belong to the set of the integers. They're not integers, so this is not a fraction. But it is something else, it's a ratio, because for example, if I write pi divided by e, well, this is a ratio. It's not a fraction. They're not integers, but this is a ratio. And this is a ratio because pi divided by e, uh, pi and e are not integers. But that's a fraction, uh, technically called a ratio. It means take pi and divide it by e. So this is a ratio. This can be seen as a ratio. And, uh, that's why a lot of people say this is not rigorous, but it is rigorous. And now we're seeing why this thing
can be erased rigorously. So let's pick a function. I have a xy plane here, and uh, I have some function f of x. What is the derivative of the function at some point? For example, this point here, this point p. Well, it gives us the angular coefficient, so the slope of this line tangent to the graph at this point. And for every point where the function is differentiable, of course, we have the tangent line with some slope. And that quantity is the derivative of the function. Now, what is, uh, we often denote the derivative of a function with a dash here, so f prime of x, and uh, we all know that. So, what is that dy? Well, if we consider this, this tangent line, so this is our point x, and uh, this is our point x plus delta x, we know that this quantity here, the difference between the two is delta x. So what is delta y is this, uh, what is dy, not delta y, is this increment of the function here, as you can see, this segment. So it tells how much the slope of the function tangent at that point changes. So what we mean by dy is the slope of the tangent line, so f prime of x times delta x. And those are just numbers. Uh, we put a delta x, it could be 5, 4.3, 2.4, pi, whatever you want. And if we multiply it by the slope, we get the amount it changes. And why does it work? Because we're not talking about the function now, we're talking about the tangent to the function at that specific point. So if we take dy divided by delta x, this equals to the derivative of the function at that point. And this can be done to every point of the function where, of course, it's differentiable. And uh, this works because the slope of a, of a line is simply delta y of the line that we call ty divided by dx, delta x. So this is how much the tangent increases. And this is true, we can put numbers and we find dy. So we find that those two are actually numbers. Now, why do we have a delta x here? Because we simply denoting by delta x a finite interval, not something very small. But from this definition, let's, let's find what happened at the function f equals to x. So we all know how this function looks like. So here's our function f of x equals x. Now we want to compute the linear increment of the function. It means the increment we found earlier of the tangent line, that is a linear increment of this function. Uh, now, this is sometimes also called df because uh, what we mean is the increment is of the function is the linear increment of the function. And we want to do it for this function. Now, what's the derivative of this function? Well, we know that f prime of x equals 1. The derivative simply equals 1. And it equals 1 everywhere. Now, we want to calculate the linear increment of the function, so the increment of the tangent to the function at some point, which equals to f prime of x, which is 1, times delta x. In other words, df equals dx, so the increment of the function equals the delta x. Now, instead of the function, it's convenient to write uh, the function, I mean, f equals x, so we want to write dx equals to delta x. So we see that the increment for this particular function equals to delta x. And uh, this is important because now what we can do is to rewrite this expression here in terms of dx. 
because we know that dx corresponds to delta x for that function. And we can do that for every function because uh, we're not talking about the differential of the function, we're talking about another differential. That is, this quantity here is independent of the function because we plug this number in and we want to find the increment of the function. So what we do is to write df equals f prime of x times dx. And remember, those two are numbers. Now, it's very important, so it's better if we review what we've done so far, and then we're going to move on more interesting things. So if we have our x, y plane, we have a function, we take the tangent line to the function at some point, we know its slope is given by the derivative of the function, and we want to know how much the fun the tangent changes as we increase this delta x. And this quantity here is called dy, that is the increment of the tangent to the function. What is delta y? Well, delta y is another thing. It's how much the function changes. Now we're talking about the tangent line. This is why we use different notation and we call it dy. And uh, those two are just numbers. So what we can do is to simply divide both sides by x. So we get df divided by dx equals to f prime of x. The ratio of the linear increment of the function at some point x divided by the increment itself, and those two are numbers, provided that dx is not equal to zero, equals to the derivative at that point. And this makes sense because the tangent to the function at some point has the slope equal to the slope of the function at that point. So if, if we take this dy and we divide by this dx, we're going to get the derivative of the function at that point because dy by dx is constant for a line. So this is why we can do that and uh, we can treat uh, this notation in this way. Obviously, it's different from what we were talking earlier, but this is true and we can multiply and divide by dx and df if we think of them in this way. Okay, but now what about the differential equations, the separable differential equations? Well, now we're talking about them and we're going to do that in three ways. The not rigorous way that I'll show you it's rigorous, the rigorous way and the justification of the non-rigorous way. So. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's pick a very easy differential equation. It doesn't need to be difficult. So let's take, for example, dy by dx equals to y. Now we can write, uh, firstly, let's do the rigorous way. So the rigorous way, I'll write it here. So f prime of x equals to f of x or we can simply write using the same notation, y prime equals to y. So how can we do this? Well, we have y prime, we have y, so we may want to bring y to the other side. So we have y prime divided by y equals to one. Now we can integrate both sides with respect to x, so we use the standard notation, the integral of y prime divided by y dx equals to the integral of one dx. We integrate with respect to x. And now what's this thing here? We have y prime, we have y. We can do a u sub, as you can see, y prime dx is our dy, so this is the integral of d of, sorry, let's write it rigorously, so we put 1 over y dy, and this is obviously x, obviously plus some constant c, 
Now, this integral is easy. It's the natural log of the absolute value of y, which equals x plus c. So the absolute value of y equals 2 e to the x plus c. And uh, obviously, we can just uh, separate this exponent, writing this as e to the x times e to the c, and we call that big C, another constant. But E to, but as you can see, this uh, quantity here is positive, so we can simply write y equals c e to the x. And we've solved our differential equation. If we put c e to the x here, we get c e to the x equals c e to the x. So that's trivial. And uh, let's move to the other the example. So this is the rigorous example. Now we're going to do the non-rigorous example. So we have dy by dx equals y. Let's separate the variable. So we move y to the other side and we move dx to the other side. So we have dy divided by y equals to dx. Now we can integrate both sides. But this is different because here we put in just the integral sign. Here we integrate it with respect to a variable. Like when you differentiate, you differentiate with respect to something. And the same thing obviously uh, works for integrals. You should do that instead of this. This is natural log, the absolute value of y. This is x plus c. And as you can see, they're the same. So at the end, you get y equals c e to the x, where c is just some constant. And this is considered the non-rigorous way, but it works. So why does it work? Because this is rigorous, of course. Because if we consider the y by the x as the increment, linear increment of the function, then we are allowed to do that because these are just numbers. So let's do that. We can multiply things and it's completely rigorous and we get dy divided by uy equals to dx. Now, what about the integral? Well, we know what dy equals to. We know that dy equals to f prime of x dx. y and x are, and f are interchangeable. You can call a function y equals f of x or f of x equals uh, f of x. It's the same thing. So dy equals to f prime of x dx. So f prime of x dx divided by y, which equals dx. Now we integrate both sides in this way. No, this is not rigorous. What we can do is that those two are just numbers. We saw that these are the, how much we want to, uh, the change in x, uh, in which we want to find the change in y. So we can, those are numbers. They're not equal to zero, so we can just, simplify them because they're numbers and we left with f prime of x over y so f prime of x we can write it as y prime just a different notation divided by y equals to one and now we can proceed and integrate both sides with respect to x in this standard way so we have y prime over y equals to the integral of one in dx. And we got back to this case. So as you can see, the two are completely equal. This is the rigorous way to do that, using this new way of looking at differentials. If you finally understood how that works, because it took me a lot of time, and I finally got to this conclusion uh, after a lot of time. So I know it's confusing, but we finally understand how this notation can be transformed into something else. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and uh, share this video with your friends. Leave a comment below, a thumbs up, and as always, until next time, bye.